Welcome back to the Oakney School. The summer break has reached its end and so the Oakney School has begun again. In our last episode before the summer break we took a look at the Scotch Gambit and today we'll proceed by taking a look at the Queen's Gambit. The Queen's Gambit is achieved after d4, d5 and c4. And from here it's up to Black to decide whether to choose to accept the gambit or decline it. The most popular continuation from here is c6 leading into the slot defense, a very solid opening which was first explored in the late 16th century only to lay dormant until the 20th century where it became extremely popular and has been so ever since. But this week's episode will be devoted to another line namely the Queen's Gambit Accepted, which is introduced after D takes on C4. This is Black's most straightforward way of fighting the Queen's Gambit. By taking the pawn, Black moves his pawns away from the center, but gains a pawn in the process, a maneuver which requires White to answer by playing very sharply in turn. Because something one must remember is that an advantage of a pawn might seem small and unimportant, but actually it is all the advantage one needs to tip the balance and win the entire game. So after Black's capture on c4, White has to respond in turn in order not to be left behind. The move e4 here is without a doubt a logical move, enabling White to get a perfect pawn structure in the center. Simultaneously, White threatens the c4 pawn by opening up for the bishop on f1. With the pawn on c4 being at risk of getting taken, Black has to be quite careful when it comes to proper continuation. Because should Black decide to take it easy, Black will simply get a far worse position, since the material would equal out and White would have an extremely strong center. Black could try play to play b5 in order to protect the pawn on c4 and hold the material advantage, but White can gain equality after e a4 c6, b3, e5, knight to f3, knight to f6, an exchange on b5, followed by b taking on c4. More common moves instead of b5 are e5, knight to f6, and knight to c6. Black's plan behind these moves are to destroy the white center, while white is focused on trying to recapture the lost pawn. Knight to c6 and e5 in this position focuses on attacking the d4 pawn, while knight to f6 reaches toward the e4 pawn. But before cho choosing which move to play, as black in this position, one has to consider which move fits one's own playing style the best. But let us take a closer look at black's knight to c6. This move will more often than not lead to a quite complex position where black will have to a good counter chances. White is now forced to protect the d4 pawn either by playing the stable knight to f3 or the aggressive d5. After d5 follows knights to e5, protecting the c4 pawn and therefore forcing white to threaten the knight once again. If white does this by playing bishop to f4, Black answers by playing knight to g6 in turn threatening the bishop on f4. The bishop should probably retreat to e3 here because after bishop to g3, black can play e5, locking the white bishop away simultaneously as the move releases the black squared bishop on f8. After bishop takes on c4, the position is equal. But if white instead of playing d5 plays knight to f3, a different position arises. Black seizes the opportunity to pressure the d4 pawn by pinning the protective knight on f3 by playing bishop to g4. White has to be really careful in order not to blunder here. For example, a move as natural as bishop to e3 will give Black the advantage after a simple capture on f3. White cannot recapture with the queen since that will lead to the loss of the d4 pawn and is instead forced to recapture with the pawn leading to white getting a weak kingside with weaknesses which black can easily exploit. Because of this, white should play d5 instead of bishop to e3. Now we will end this week's episode of the opening school, but we will of course be back with more on the queen's gambit in two weeks 
after the special edition of the Chess History episode with Arne Johansson. And then we will analyze Black's fourth move, Knight to F6 and E5. So see you then.